going on people welcome to united view welcome to the road trip extra kind of add these in when, we, when it's another day after a road trip you know it's, it's nice to do a little video on the way down um and there's a lot of news to get into and really i got a lot to get off my chest i got a lot to get off my chest in the in the aftermath of yesterday's performance because it still just don't sit right with me so i've got a few things i want to discuss with that but the first bit of news is the, the main news for today which is that martial um offer has come in from um uh, Sevilla and Man United have knocked it back due to wages. They want they want Sevilla to pay all of Martial's wages. Um, and you know what's more interesting is that until they get that offer, which is um, a loan with covering all of his wages, they'll just keep him happy to keep him through January. The way I see it is, when I see performances like yesterday and Martial sitting at home, I'm thinking, may as well give him a go. May as well give him a go up front. Um, or in an attacking for in an attacking place in our team ahead of these players who are playing at the moment absolutely shocking which i'll get onto. but like i said yesterday about the martial situation he wants out we know that and they're trying to find the best situation for it um and man you know being quite stubborn on it really there's a player who said i don't want to be there but they're saying listen okay fine but we won't let you go until they um come in and pay all of your wages um oh, martial has got to be on a good what 170 maybe 150 minimum I'd say Martial easily um, I would have thought so anyway um, and that's a lot of money you look at Spain they don't they don't pay like that do they they don't they don't often pay um, way over the odds for, for players and you know that's one of the biggest pools of the Premier League where a lot of players end up here um, even whether it's for short periods long periods the payday is amazing and I'm not saying that it's all about money but in terms of the league that we're in we're getting players who are on huge sums of money who probably don't warrant anywhere near that type of money but it's only a reflection of the money that's in the premier league so they don't make they don't you know it's not their fault that the, the, the product of the premier league attracts so much money that's why they're on the big wages but that's where the sticking point comes into trying to offload these players who then go i don't want to be here what man united will what, what pay him up his contract or they need to consume that within the next team who wants to buy him to pay up that contract plus pay man united what they feel is necessary they want a loan Man United don't want to be paying, what, the best part of 70 grand a week to Martial, um, which is half, probably around about half of his wages as a guesstimate. They don't want to be paying that out um, for the rest of the season. They want another team to take him and, and get that off the wage bill. But then I'm thinking, for that to happen, do they, do they need that money for another player then in January? You know, um, So we'll have to wait and see. But I just feel like with how poorly we've been playing, which we all witnessed last night, we all witnessed against Norwich. Okay, you can give it a little bit of a bligh against Young Boys because it was a much much changed team. But the the, the Newcastle, the, the Crystal Palace game was good for 30 minutes and then average. Um, you're looking at it thinking, why not? If he, if Martial does stay, give him a go then, because um, it really has been poor. So the Martial thing, I think, is going to rumble on. I do think they'll find the right um, scenario. I think he'll end up going. I really do. Um, I know the money might be a sticking point, but I think there'll probably be a middle ground. Um, it, it'll be interesting to see how much of a resolve we do put up in terms of digging our heels in and saying that um, he's not going unless this, otherwise we'll just keep him. Because we all know, that's one thing, you're not going to get a rejuvenated Martial. If Martial does not get his move after being so public about this, what sort of Martial are we going to have? We're not going to have a Martial that's fit and fighting, ready to go. I think one of the fans said to me yesterday in the fan views, um, you know, why has Martial stopped playing? I said, well, he wants to leave. And that fan, the fan said, well, we're still paying his money. He should still play. And I get that. We're completely entitled to demand that from him from a contract perspective. But in a perspective where the team's low on morale, we're trying to get people who really want to be here and buy in and change the mentality and the intensity of this team. Is Martial really going to want to run around at a really high intensity level, which he should do as a professional footballer, but in this situation where his head's in Seville, as it is, and just wants to get the move, and the club, he will see it as maybe the club making it a little bit difficult for him, is he going to be the right sort of player to keep around the place? Probably not. Like Ralph says, it's, it's kind of contradictory to what he's saying. And I know Ralph probably not in control of the finances situation, but from a footballing perspective, he said he only wants people to be here who want to be here. I shouldn't have to convince you. So Martial's made it clear he doesn't want to be here. So keeping him by not letting him get the move if the money's not right. One thing is just not playing him, but another thing is putting him in the starting lineup um, when he's a player who clearly doesn't want to be here. That's an issue. So and and it's something that Ralph Randnick himself has clearly stated he doesn't want he doesn't want that in there. 
So we'll have to wait and see. That's why I think it's better to let him go, even if Man United have to, to bite the bullet and pay a little a little bit more of the wages that they wanted to pay. Maybe not that 70k that I'm saying. Maybe it's more like 30k. I don't know. Whatever it is, but maybe they might have to bite the bullet on that because I just don't see I don't see a positive of keeping Martial when he doesn't want to be here. Even even keeping him when he did want to be here and trying to play him into form, trying to get this player out of him that we wanted to, hasn't quite come to fruition like we wanted it to. So what's it going to be like with a Martial who really has no interest in being here? I don't I don't see how that benefits us. I really don't. So watch this space on that one, Martial to Sevilla. I don't think that's going to be the last we've heard of that. I think they'll probably come back with another one. Or you never know as the transfer window goes on. Um, well, it's not officially open yet, but it will be in a few days. But as it as it as it carries on, you put, you might get an interest from somewhere else that was a bit left field that none of us um, expected because you know it's a business, isn't it? And footballers want to get paid. I get that, and and teams want to get what they see their players worth. So maybe someone else can come in for Martial and, and pay a pay more. Maybe it won't be severe, but I do think the best thing to do is just make sure he secures the move. He's no good to us if he doesn't want to be here. I can't see him, but can't see him buying into Ralph Ragnick's thing just to say. Oh well, I'm gone. I'm gone in three months, four months in the summer anyway. When I get my permanent, so I just need, you know I wanted the loan just the end of the season, but I didn't get it. I just collect the piece, just I just ride it out, just be on the bench a couple of times, come on a couple of five minutes, ten minutes here, whatever. Done. Do you know what I mean? I can't. I can't see that being beneficial to us. So watch this space. Um, the other stuff now, just in the fallout, in the fallout from yesterday, man. I said it. There's a couple of things. What? we do is we look at McTominay and Fred as a huge issue right in our midfield and look the generic quality of being a Manchester United centre midfielder is correct those two are not up to it Fred more so I think does more for me I like Fred in terms of how he gets about the pitch I think he's really important but even the level to be top top draw Man United midfielder yeah I can agree with that and McTominay has certain attributes about him that are good. Do you know what I mean? He can get about the pitch, he can be aggressive, and maybe in a well oiled team, you know, with some other great players all around the pitch, you can maybe have a McTominay in there for some games. But by and large, we agree that it's not the level. But I have to say, guys, I, 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 look, and I'm not just saying this because it's like, oh, I go to the game, so I see it better than anyone else. I would never be that, that um, kind of, you know, rude about it because sometimes things do look difficult on TV. But yesterday in particular, and just over the last few months, I just look at the movement ahead of them too, and I look at the forward players, right, and their appetite to play intense football and make basic runs. I'm talking basic runs in terms of, okay, I can see my centre midfielder's got the ball, he's 15 yards away from me. Let me turn and spin running behind. Oh, I might not get, I saw Ronaldo doing it loads, and Ronaldo, I'll get onto him, because I'm not just being up his ass. Ronaldo, obviously, go experience. You don't get as much gold as Ronaldo's got in his career if your movement's not good. But little darts, stop. Oh, I didn't get it. Come back. Oh, let me try and run. Oh, let me come feet. Sure. I saw Mason Greenwood just walking. Or just either walking or looking. I saw Rashford either walking or looking. At times, I saw Ronaldo walking or looking. Other times, yes, he was giving it a little bit of a shoulder, not getting it. Arms go up in the air. I'll get to that. But the generic movement of our forward players and basic intensity is absolutely shocking. That's one thing. So if I am a centre midfielder in McTominay and Fred, we don't want to see them pass sideways. We don't want to see them pass backwards. But half of the time, what options do they have? Even, even you know, and Bruno, it, you know, gave, away, I don't, gave away the ball probably 19 million times yesterday. Yeah. But, and, and collectively as a team, what was it, over 145 times we gave the ball away? Again, I'll get to that, that's a team thing. But I'm just talking about the attack right now as one of the biggest issues that we've got. It's the movement is so, so bad, guys. I don't know if you think I'm going overboard, you think I'm overreacting here, but I'm seeing it with my own eyes and it's almost like I know what I see. And I'm seeing, I'm seeing nothing. I'm seeing just players strutting about the pitch at a snail's pace waiting expecting for something to happen and everybody wanting it at feet oh give me it give me a sec i'll lend it back to you i'll give me it back again i'll lend it back it's shit there's no intensity and that intensity to be fair filters throughout the team i just started with the forward lines in terms of looking at mctominy and fred and why they get such a hard time i get that they're not good enough but the other side of why they're looking average is also there's not a lot on there's not a lot on so of course i've got a pass sideways of course i have to pass back that's one aspect yeah, that's one aspect of 
what their defeat of, of what's going on in the middle of the park. Hence, hence the, the turnover of play when they do lose it from trying to force it or whatever, no movement. They get it nicked off in mid, midfield. We lose the midfield battle no matter who we play against, whether it's Norwich, whether it's Man City, we seem to be losing the midfield battle. Um, the other thing is that intensity then filters through to the rest of the side in terms of everything that we do. I'm already bored. I'm already bored of listening to Ralph Ranick talking about physicality. Because I'll ask you guys, what do you think he means by that? In terms of saying we're not physical enough. Because he's not just talking about winning the, 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 the tackles. That's one thing. Win your first, win your second. Basic football. The physicality of getting around the pitch and being intense in everything that you do. The top, top players, right? You look at the, you look at the top, top performing players like Mo Salah, like um, Bernardo Silva. You look at Kante. You look at players who just play good week in, week out, yeah? They're not all huge specimens of athletes and super strong and can bench 150 kg. That's not what being physical means. Physicality comes into slash intensity. What the top players do is what is, is give a good account of themselves. You look at Gundogan, players like that, they just get about because their mindset is, I need to play with intensity in order to impact this game. I can't just strut and stroll through the game and, and, and wait for things to happen. And I'm looking at the players that we have of how Ralph wants us to play, and I ask myself deep down, and maybe you guys should do this as well, and this is what I mean about when I say maybe we've got some players who are just not as good as we think they are or they think they are. Do I look at Mason Greenwood and think he's an absolute hunter? Hungry to win back the ball. Hungry to get in behind. Hungry to work the centre-half or work the winger. Mason's a, a player at the moment with his development. I'm not saying he can't be that, but I'm talking about right now. Mason naturally to me looks like a player who wants the ball at feet, can kind of get running at a player, take him left, take him right, boom, get his shot off. Do you know what I mean? In terms of running in behind and occupying a fullback and occupying a centre half at a high intensity level, that's not something Mason's been asked to do at his young age development. So I would probably say no, he's not that. I look at uh, Rashford and I don't know what's going on. I can't, I, I don't understand it. I've said for, I know people say about, you know, his decision-making IQ and stuff like that, and he'll never be this and he'll never be that. I, I think under the right guidance and the right manager with, with the right demands on him where he knows I, I ain't going to play unless I do X, Y, Z. I think you can get a tune out of Rashford to what we want to see at high intensity levels. I think he does possess that, but right now he's too comfortable. The guy's playing every single week and putting in two out of tens at best, at best. And that's not all Marcus's fault. Yes, he's coming back from injury. Yes, we've been over-reliant on him. Yes, in the past, he's been our go-to guy. Do you know what I mean? This isn't a sell Rashford thing. He's crap. This, that's not what this is. But this is looking at it right now in the moment that we're in. Head down, losing the ball, not the instant, you know, the instant reaction to go win it back isn't there. I look at Bruno. Is he a player who's going to play intense, um, you know, energetic all the time we've seen it from him running around like a bit like a blue ass fly but in terms of a disciplined role he's not and then you look at how we pass the ball around the back Harry Maguire I'm not saying Varane was top top notch he's my guy he wasn't he was at fault for the first goal but at least with Varane you can say he's been injured for a few months he's got to come back into it all right cool Harry Maguire's been dropping two out of tens for about the last six months Horrendous, even the way he's receiving the football. You know, when you look at the basic fundamentals of the football, the way Harry Maguire is receiving the football, like there was a time when he could, he didn't want it on his left foot, he spooned it out, right foot, out, play. You know? Give Harry Maguire time on the ball, yes, he can pick out the left back tellers in that little channel that he does all the time. Give him time on the ball, yes, he can ping it wide right to Sancho. But generically, he's just doing everything too slow and, then, and he can't defend in one on one situations. Playing at Man United, the levels that we should have is you should be able to defend in one-on-one -on -one situations. Fullback and Tellers and Dallow, look, we've had a good run saying that, you know, two clean sheets, so obviously they're going to keep the shirts. Wan-Bissaka and Shaw got work to do to get back into the team. And look, you know my criticism of Wan-Bissaka, I'm not saying he would have changed the game yesterday because he probably wouldn't have. He probably wouldn't have. But Dallow and Tellers aren't that great. They're not that intense, you know? I just think there's a lot of average stuff going on here that actually probably will never change until we change personnel. Again, so what we're saying, we need another rebuild. Doesn't matter what manager there is, these, these players, this bunch of players, this set of players, are not running around and playing with a basic intensity. I'm seeing Norwich play with more intensity than us. 
Newcastle more intensity than us. I'm seeing Joe Linton play in the eighth position and give a midfield masterclass. Joe Linton. And it's not two separate names like I thought it was. It is actually one. I didn't even know that. Joe Linton. So you can't tell me that it's about it's just because you know having the better players means you should win. Because that's the only reason we're saying we should be getting top four right now. It's because of our squad. But if we think about it, the way that we're playing, we're nowhere near. We're not, we're not going to get anywhere near it if we keep playing like this. Um, I look at Sancho, another one. Um, what, what I'll say is, let me just see. Um, what, what I will say is, is Sancho, I like him. I do like him a lot and I want him to do well. But again, the basic intensity in terms of running in behind, being more active, there's a couple of times, I think he had, the ball was in front of him and Bruno had it. And I was like, okay, Sancho, you didn't get it. Run, M move away from him. Just like little things, little things, little things. So look, I think we've got a big problem because I, so there's that side of it, the basic intensity. And two, this formation that I look at, I know Ralph said that, you know, the four triple two formation, he doesn't really see it as something that is an issue. It was more of the application. Yeah, that's, that could be true, but I do look at it at face value and say, I'm not sure that narrow formation suits the players that we have. And the problem that he does have is, he, is he going to be there long enough or when we're firefighting trying to just keep pace with the rest with the Arsenal's with the Tottenham's um, with the Chelsea's trying to keep pace with those teams is there enough time to keep waiting for the, it to click in because look at half time even Ralph went sod this sod this can't have this can't, I, can't, I can't have this I need, I need wingers <laughs> I need wingers put Cavani on um, and it worked and the goals came from wide areas so even he was like maybe not so that's an issue um, Cavani has to play Cavani must play Simple as that Like I was saying in it Remember the show I done And quite a few of you Was disagreeing with me It was really mixed in the comments When we were talking about The Barcelona link When you know There was a lot of reports Saying there's talks There's this there's that It just proves why We can't let him go And look Hopefully he doesn't Break down with injury We've got to manage him I get that But he came on for a half And, and he, he done more in 45 minutes and probably should have scored another in 45 minutes than any other player done in the whole match and you know what when he's looking at it was looking at him warming up just looking at him warming up and I know that like, these are probably things you won't see on TV he just does everything correctly he plays the game in the right way he looks after himself yes I know he gets injured but in terms of his his attitude to being a professional I can just see his leaps above everyone else's I can see it with my own eyes from the warm-up when he was warming up at half time and I know this is going to sound pedantic and you might think I'm thinking way too deep into it. I'm going to tell you what I see, what I saw and how I perceived it. The way that Jaden Sancho was warming up, just kind of in the gloves, jacket, just a little strut, little stroll, a couple of little, fun, little passes, just neat and tidy. And I was looking at, um, um, I was looking at what um, Cavani was doing and how he was uh, warming up. Intense run, short, sharp drills. It just, it just looked like he was ready for the game. And in the first couple of minutes and a half, I saw, I think, Jaden Sancho went for a header, didn't quite work out, got barred off the ball by somebody. Um, but Cavani was bringing people, he just looked more ready. And then Jaden, Jaden grew into the game. But his intensity um, is what we need. And he's embarrassing the other players with how he's keeping his standards so high, in my opinion. I look at Bruno and, and, um, and Ronaldo, and this is what I wanted to get to. Gary Neville touched on it. I completely agree. Listen, Ronaldo's the GOAT in it of all football. I get it. There's certain man you can't talk to. Yeah, I'm Ronaldo. You, you, they, they, they don't care who you are, football players will tell you this, fans will tell you this, anyone around football will tell you this. There is there is hierarchy. There is there is hierarchy, you know, with players and you know certain respect levels and stuff like that. But I'll tell you one thing, it is starting to piss me off as well, like what Gary Neville said. I do agree. This whole throwing your arms around and all this, you can do it a bit, but Ronaldo's going overboard with it. And I feel like Bruno's just following suit. It's petulant, it's childish. And what it is doing to me is shirking responsibility. Because these men are playing shit too. Bruno's giving the ball away 40 times a game. But you, but, but when, when Tellers gives you a ball that's a bit overcooked or, or McTominay tried to feed you a pass or young little Green was trying to do it, you're doing all this, doing that, you're doing this. It's shit. It's shit. I don't like it. I don't like it at all. So that needs to change. I agree with Gary Neville 100% on that. Um, and I just feel like there's going to be there's going to have to be a lot changed in a short space of time, personnel-wise as well. A lot of these players, I think, 
um, need to understand that their places are up for grabs and I'm not sure that that, that goes throughout the squad yeah, Harry Maguire for me shouldn't be playing right now shouldn't be playing right now I get it Lindelof you know he's had a real tough time you know he had a real tough time obviously he had complications with his, with his young child he had the chest problems um, away at Norwich had to come off with a heart monitor now he's got COVID he's going for a rough time that's fine I understand that so I, I want him to obviously get back to fight and fitness you know on a personal and on the pitch but I just think he should be playing he's been our most consistent uh, defender hopefully he does come back into it Maguire's just not there he, I don't, he's not performing at the level that I expect of a Manchester United captain at all at all he's just not forget the price tag just his generic performance levels are absolutely horrendous right now they really are um, Varane's got to buck his ideas up quick as well he needs more game time we need to keep playing him but again not good enough from him I'm not going to shirk away from that not good enough you know what I mean he, he just wasn't at it at all um, so what I will say is changes going to have to be made I think Bruno not being there Bruno not being available against uh, Burnley in the next game is going to be interesting to see is Donny going to come in there is Jesse Lingard going to get another chance in there is he just going to go with Sancho and then one other I don't know we'll see will he change will he change that wide formation but the two up front needs to be Ronaldo and Cavani I'll tell you that for free I'll tell you that for absolute free so I had to get some things off my chest because I tell you what we're looking for this Ralph Ranjit bounce and we haven't seen it and, and we've got to come away from now we're four games in now so that whole first half an hour against uh, the first half an hour against um, Crystal Palace long gone long gone that, we, we, we can't be doing that thing now of uh, oh yeah but we were good in the first half an hour it means, means piss all because in the other games all the other 90 minutes were absolutely horrendous and Ralph keeps talking about this balance and intensity and physicality and we're literally seeing the opposite literally seeing the opposite if we keep performing like this we'll be out of a top four race before we know it so big changes need to be made in terms of the mentality of these players and that's on them I'm looking at these players now do you know what I mean and I know a lot of people have said it before about just the players you know you remember, you remember the old Rick, the Ricky times Ricky would say it Roy Keane would say it these players would get you sacked Shik has come home to roost mate the spotlight's on these players and we're looking at them individually and how they're taking care of their own performance levels and they're going missing they're going missing so something's got to change man hopefully we see a big response against Burnley you talk about physicality and intensity if you don't have that against Burnley you ain't winning home or away doesn't matter do you know what I mean so there you go smash the like on the video guys subscribe if you lot are new let me know what you think about Martial would you be happy if he did stay until the end of the season at least and try and get a tune out of him or do you think more what I'm saying which is let him go at all costs um, let me know about that um, and we'll have a preview for tomorrow and Flex and KG show tomorrow as well peace